because one person does one bad thing does not mean that that person is characterized by the single bad action that they've done. And this is the problem with Christianity. People try and put people in boxes. God commanded genocide of people multiple times in the Bible. The condone evil actions. For instance, in the Bible it says that if you rape a woman, you're allowed to marry her. How evil is that? To condone slavery against other people. I'm talking about all sorts of injustice. Then how dare you call me a liar? Don't say that I'm a liar because I'm lying. I that is disgusting. It's despicable. Things about God promoting raping women. Somebody who, who, who commands a group of Jews to commit genocide against Syrians. A real God, a just God, would never allow something like that to happen in some old book that's made up a fairy tale. Don't listen to this. That's insanity. And that's what you guys believe. And that's ridiculous. Do not listen to this man. He's spreading lies and deception. No, he's not. There's, no, he's there's not. There's very clearly no, no God. If there were, there wouldn't be children wrong. dying in the streets. I like this. There wouldn't be people who are starving. There wouldn't be people dying unreasonably of cancer and other preventable diseases because they can't afford to treat themselves. A real God, a just God, would never allow something like that to happen. Now, maybe there is a God. If there is, there isn't the one, it's not the one that was written by some guys 3,000, 5,000 years ago in some old book that made up a fairy tale. Don't listen to this. If you want to take care of people, that's great. That's a good thing to do. Help humanity. Help your fellow person. The Bible is a, is a type of thing where it, you can open it up and it'll have things about God promoting raping women. In fact, God commanded, God commanded genocide of people multiple times in the Bible. You can read it. It's What's in your there. name? My name's Andre. Andre, Andre, Andre. Pleasure. Andre, where did God command people to rape it? I've been reading the Bible okay. every day for 46 sure. years. I've never found any Bible verse. Great, I'm gonna pull it up for you right God now. God commanded people to rape. I'm gonna okay? pull it up for you. Yes, I will. Okay. Uh, Andre? Yes, sir. So, Andre, while you're doing that, I'll just talk to Brennan. Yeah. So, today, get right with God. Not soon, because you could die between now sure. and soon. It's true. So, it's today, 150,000 people die Good. every 24 Should be. hours. Thank you, I appreciate it. Now, the my friend Andre is talking about suffering. And all the tragedies, if there was a loving God, it wouldn't happen. That's a fallacious argument. The Bible tells us why there is suffering. We live in a fallen creation. When sin came, if you read the Bible, it brought with it disease, pain, death, and suffering. We die because we've sinned against God. So to reject God in the Bible because of suffering is ridiculous. We should accept what the Bible says because of suffering, because it's evidence of what God says is true in His Word. So, Today, get right with God. Please, okay, examine my motives. Why am I talking to you like this? It's because I love you. I care about you, okay? That's the only reason. And I want to give you this $5. Not because you earn it, because you're not a good person, but because I love you, I care about you, and I want to express it. And that's how God gives everlasting life. We can't earn it by being religious. Now, my friend here is probably an atheist. Are you Absolutely, atheist? I am. Now, let me let me just. Are you yeah. going to talk to me or run away? I'll do. I'll stay as long as you'd like. I would like you to stay for two or three days. So just stay there. Sure. Okay? <laughs> Particularly, we are Celtic witches, and we believe our main. You say witches? I have witches. Witches. Okay. Now, most people think of witches as running around with black hats and that. So you're not. You're not that sort of witch. You're a Absolutely. white witch. Is that right? Well, that's there is, correct. There's really no white or black it's like electricity electricity is neutral so are you a spiritual person yes what do you mean by spiritual that i believe in god or there is some type of higher power do you think god's angry at you no yeah. andre yes sir thank you for having the courage oh. and convictions oh, right. thank you i appreciate i appreciate you in, in, in engaging in civil discourse yeah. so is he happy with everybody no. Is he happy with rapists? I would say that he isn't happy, but he forgives them. Just if they rape, he says, oh, that's okay, I forgive you. He just lets them go. Man murders three women, cuts his throat after he's raped them, and he says, oh, I forgive, no problem. Yes, I would assume that, but... It... He has no sense of justice or truth or righteousness. He's worse than an ordinary judge. A judge wouldn't let someone go that raped three women and slit their throats. He'd be very angry. He'd send them to prison. He'd send them an electric chair because he's a good man. Is God less good than a judge? No. The Bible is a revelation of what God's character and nature is. And we tend to have our own and we gravitate to our own because they're congenial. They make us feel good. If God's a bit like Santa Claus, we can snuggle up to him. But if he's not and he's just and holy, 
we could be in big trouble. I've never found any Bible verse. Great, I'm going to pull it up for you right God now. God commanded people to rape. I'm going to okay? pull it up for you. Tell me why you're an atheist. Tell me why you're an so I'm an atheist because I used to be a Christian and I found out that there was a lot of hatred and a lot of bigotry inside the church and it didn't align with a lot of the things that people said that good people were supposed to do. And then a good friend of mine came to me and told me, he said, listen man, you don't have to be Christian. You don't have to be religious to be a good person. Andre's friend was right. You don't have to be a Christian to be a good person. You just have to make up your own definition of good. To illustrate this, let's go back to Brennan and listen to what he said about being a good person as we go through some of the Ten Commandments. Brennan, in a court of law, the judge will judge you on your crime, not on your good works. Judge, I robbed the bank, shot the guard, but I do good for people. He's going to say, what are you talking about? You're judged by the crime and not by your good deeds. Right. Okay, they don't wash away your crime. Okay. Have you ever used God's name in vain? Yes, yes. Okay. Do you know what that's called? Using God's name in vain. No, it's called blasphemy. It's very okay. serious. Okay. okay. Ever wonder why you do that? That's a good thing to think about. Yeah. Can you think of anybody in history whose name has been used as a cuss word? Mother Teresa, Napoleon, Hitler. Can you think of anyone? No. Only Jesus Christ. Only Jesus, yeah. So why would that be? Yeah. Isn't that strange? Yeah, it, is it does have an explanation. Jesus said, The world hates me because I testify of it that its works are evil. Think of how criminals hate the police and will even kill an officer not because of who he is, but for that which he stands, for that which is good and right and just, and they stand for that which is evil. This evil world hates Jesus Christ and contemptuously uses his name as a cuss word for the same reason to go, Brennan, and I appreciate your honesty. Jesus said whoever looks at a woman and lusts for her has committed adultery already with her in his heart. Have you ever looked at a woman with lust? Yes, all the time. All the time? Okay. <laughs> You're so honest, I appreciate that. So, Brennan, I'm not judging you, but right. by your own admission, you're a lying, thieving, blasphemous, adulterer at heart. Now, do you still think you're a good person? Yes. Okay, you know what your problem is? Your standard of good is very low. Right. Right. Okay? The dictionary has over 40 different definitions of the word good, but number one in their list is moral excellence. Jesus said that only God is morally excellent, and that's the standard by which he'll judge on Judgment Day. Moral perfection in thought, word, and in deed. Really sit there and tell me that Adam and Eve populated the earth because then everybody would be inbred, and by the time we're in this generation, we have a foot out of our head and weird little arms. I believe in Adam and Eve. I believe we have a, uh, two ancestors, male and female. How do you think we got here? It's evolution. Evolution. Yeah, but how do you think we got here? I mean, that's the process. What was the first cause? I mean, there's a greater universal being. Whether you call it God or we call it a goddess, it's, it's there. There's multiple creators. So where'd you get that from? from? Where do they come from? From the beginning of time. Where do you think Christians got a lot of their holidays from? If you watch the History Channel, Paganism came long before Christianity and Jesus. Tell me why you're an atheist. So I'm an atheist because I used to be a Christian and I found out that there was a lot of hatred and a lot of bigotry inside the church. And it Andre is right about that too. There is a lot of hatred and bigotry within the church. False converts, those we commonly call hypocrites, that is pretenders, are within the church. The Bible says that the true and false converts sit alongside one another. Jesus called them goats among the sheep, and they'll be sorted out on Judgment Day when God separates and judges the hypocrites, those who fake their professed faith, but secretly and sometimes openly served sin. I realize, you know what, there's a lot of, there's a lot of evil stuff that goes on in, in, in the world of religion, and it's not just Christianity, it's, it's you know, uh, in Islam, uh, in in uh, you know any any kind of kind of any kind of religious sect where you find fanaticism, which is encouraged by religious texts. Because here's the thing: religious texts they don't evolve with time. So when you're talking about religion causing evil, are you talking about wars and history? No, I'm not talking about just wars and history. I'm talking about the persecution of homosexuals. I'm talking about uh, the the religious uh, people using religion to. Um, to condone slavery against other people. The word slavery has horrific connotations because of the images of America's cruel slave trade. However, there are different forms of slavery mentioned in the Bible. For example, 
If someone couldn't pay their debts, instead of being put into prison, as we often do nowadays, your unpaid bills could land you in jail. You they could instead work off the debt as a slave or servant. Biblically, the words servant and slave are synonymous. Atheists often try and equate this with the mass kidnapping and terrible cruelty of Africans in the American slave trade. But that doesn't fit, because the Bible condemns kidnapping as being punishable by death. The scriptures also speak of the taking of slaves during war, where Israel took enemy prisoners and instead of putting them to death, they were kept on as slave labor. This also happened in the United States and Great Britain during and after the Second World War. By 1946, there were 400,000 German POWs in Britain. 127,000 of them had already been prisoners of war in America and were transferred here to repair the damage done to Britain by their side. I'm talking about all sorts of injustices that are uh, propagated by text, by religious texts, including those in the Christian Bible. Now, let me let me address that. I'll, I'll address the wars thing because I think you are including it in there generally. But, but, yeah. The Encyclopedia of Wars says about 9% of wars were caused by religion. 91% of wars in history were more political. Of that 9%, most of those wars were caused by Islam, not by those who say, love your enemies, do good to those that despitefully use you, which is Christians. Hypocrites often do bad things, okay, pretenders. The big cause of death throughout history is atheism. Vladimir Lenin, Joseph Stalin, Pol Pot and Mao were all atheists and their godless life's philosophy which espoused that there is no moral responsibility resulted in the tragic deaths of a hundred million people. Yeah. So the problem isn't religion or communism, it's human nature, which is basically evil. That's what you're saying. I am saying that, but I am also saying that there are specific texts, religious texts, that condone evil actions. For instance, in the Bible it says that if you rape a woman, you're allowed to marry her. You can actually force your, your victim, you can rape them, and then force a marriage upon that person and take that person as your wife. How evil is that? Now, I'd like to answer that question, but you've got to give me one minute to answer sure. without butting in. Here's the verse that's so often cited by atheists to say that a raped woman had to marry the rapist. If a man find a damsel that is a virgin, which is not betrothed, and lay hold on her and lie with her, and they be found, then the man that lay with her shall give unto the damsel's father fifty shekels of silver, and she shall be his wife. Notice the words, and they be found. To bring context to this verse, three verses previous to it, it says that if a man rapes a woman, he was to be put to death. But if a man find a betrothed damsel in the field, and the man force her and lie with her, then the man only that lay with her shall die. Unbelievably, in the light of the previous verses saying that a rapist was to be put to death, a number of modern translations interpret lay hold on her as rape. So for those who can figure out that a dead man can't marry the woman he raped, coupled with the fact that the verse says, if they be found, implying they were both guilty, this verse obviously refers to consensual sex. It's similar to what we nowadays call a shotgun wedding. They had to get married. It is consensual sex. You read it in the King James Version. Some modern versions assume there's rape, but it can't be, because the previous verse says that, that for rape, you are put to death. The video will continue in a few seconds, but I wanted to remind you to please subscribe to our channel and click on the notifications bell. And don't forget to like, comment, and share. Thank you. Now let's go back to your atheism because I'm interested in it. I asked you why you're an atheist. Do you as an atheist believe the scientific impossibility that nothing created everything, which is what atheism is? It's a, that, that is a very, very... Um, What's the word? You're, you're boiling a very complex argument into something simple that can't be explained that way. It's really not fair. So, I mean, here's the thing is that, I'll be honest with you, like, there is, I, I personally am not an expert on uh, the creation of the universe. I, I, Do you as an atheist believe the scientific impossibility that nothing created everything, which is what atheism is? Listen to him flounder when confronted with what he believes. It's a, that, that is a very, very, um, 
what's the word? You're, you're boiling a very complex argument into something simple that can't be explained that way. It's really not fair. So, I mean, here's the thing is that, I'll be honest with you, like, there is, I, I personally am not an expert on uh, the creation of the universe. I... An atheist believes the scientific impossibility that nothing created everything. It's a form of insanity. I'm not an expert on uh, the creation of the universe. I, I understand. You can't use from... that phrase as an atheist. What? Creation of the universe. That, that denotes a what creator. I, whether or not there was one. Whether or not there was okay, a creator. So whether you... or not everything's existed in time. Did you hear that? He said whether or not there was a creation or whether or not everything existed in time. In other words, everything could be eternal and therefore didn't need a creator. But that's scientifically impossible because of the second law of thermodynamics. Everything in time runs down, it wears out. In 10 billion years, this earth will have turned into dust. Therefore, if the earth was eternal, it would have turned to dust billions of years ago. So that's not an option. I'm gonna let you continue with your argument. We know there's a creator because there's a creation. Creation cannot make itself. Nature could not create itself, I'll tell you why. For nature to make itself, it would have to be pre-existent to make itself before it made itself, which is scientifically ludicrous. And yes, you're right. Maybe right now we don't have all of the answers, but just to say that because we don't have the answer, we're gonna to go to the most next, uh, the, the easy way, the easy answer, is just not a sound way to live your life. It's, to, it's, it's a cop-out. To yeah. say there was a builder is yeah. not a simplistic argument. It's common sense. There was a painter. It's not a simplistic. We understand, it's we understand common sense. Buildings and architecture. We have science that, that is peer reviewed by other humans to understand how these things are created. Earlier on, you said you were a Christian. Is that right? I was. Yeah. So you knew the Lord? Yes. So he exists? No. So you didn't know the Lord? I, I thought I did. So you were deceived? Yes, I was deceived. So you were a Christian. You were deceived, like yes. many people. Yeah. In Mark 10, verse 17, a young man ran up to Jesus and said, Good teacher, what shall I do that I may inherit eternal life? Jesus then corrected his understanding of the word good by saying, Why do you call me good? No one is good but one, that is God. You know the commandments. Do not commit adultery, do not murder, do not steal, do not bear false witness, do not defraud, honor your father and your mother. Jesus gave him five of the Ten Commandments because the moral law brings the knowledge of sin. The Apostle Paul used the law, that is the Ten Commandments, to do that in Romans chapter 2. He said, You who preach that a man should not steal, do you steal? You who say, Do not commit adultery, do you commit adultery? I want to change the dynamic just a little bit, okay? Yeah, please. I want to address your conscience. Is that okay? I'd love to. Do you think you're a good person? I do. I try to do good by other people. Here now is where the rubber meets the road. I'm about to confront him with God's law. That is the Ten Commandments. Romans 8 verse 7 says the law is the point of contention. That is, it brings offense. The mind of the flesh is actively hostile to God. It does not submit itself to God's law since it cannot. Sinful men don't like God telling them what to do morally. The same thing happens when the law approaches a criminal. He'll either try and shoot his way out or he'll surrender. So it is with a sinner. He'll either become angry and try and cover his sins or he'll surrender by admitting them. Okay, now how many lies have you told in your life? A lie. You ever stolen something? Yes. So you're a lying thief? No. Just because one person does one bad thing does not mean that that person is characterized by the single bad action that they've done. And this is my f***ing problem with Christianity. People try and put people in boxes based on one bad thing that they've ever done. And they try and hold that over your head for your ever and ever, for the rest of your life. Let me tell you, you can do a bad thing and you can be redeemed. Can you not? Can you not? Answer my question. Can you do a bad thing and be redeemed? Then how dare you call me a liar? How dare you call me a thief for lying one time and stealing one time? Okay, now how many lies have you told in your life? A lot. It's okay. okay. Yes. I asked you if you've lied and you said many times. Yes, I have. How do you define a liar? A liar is somebody who lies intentionally to inflict somebody repeatedly. If you throw out the God of the Bible and the Ten Commandments, how do you define good and evil? Well, there's still morals and values in people, human so it's beings. wrong to kill? Well, yeah. How do you know that? Because it's wrong to kill. 
kill. How do you know that, that it's wrong to kill? How do you know that... How do you know it's wrong to kill? Because it's written in stone. God gave us Ten Commandments. And they're written on our heart via the conscience. We all know that things are wrong. You ladies think there's an afterlife? Yes, I believe in the afterlife. And what about you? There's many afterlives. But we do you just call it Summerland. It's kind of like um, you keep coming around until you've learned everything that you need to learn, and then you can go to Summerland, which is also what you would equate to heaven. Now, do you think you're a good person? If there's an afterlife, you're going to make it to heaven? Uh, Summerland, when it's my time to go. What about you? Yeah, I'm a very good. I'm more better off shape than most Christians I know, unfortunately. How many lies do you think you've told in your whole life? Not that many. Marquise, do you think you're a good person? Yes. How many lies have you told in your life? Plenty. Oh, yeah. What about you? Oh, probably dozens so and dozens like of man. times. Ever stolen something? Yes. Ever used God's name in vain? Yes. Yes. I heard you use it before. What about you? Well, of course because I do. Not my God. Now, Jesus said if you look with lust, you commit adultery in the heart. Have you ever looked with lust? Yes. Oh, yes. So, Marquis, I'm not judging you, but you've told me you're a lying thief, a blasphemer, and an adulterer at heart. So if God judges you by the Ten Commandments, we'll look to four of them, on Judgment Day, you're going to be innocent or guilty? I would say guilty. Heaven or hell? Hell. Now, does that concern you? Yes. Would you go to heaven or hell? Hell. So... But what? <laughs> if I still believe in him and I believe he died for my sins, I think he would still, I'd still be going to heaven. Are you absolutely certain of that? I mean, I, that's what faith is called, right? Would you bet your life on it? Yeah. Because yeah. you are. I guess, yeah. But You're I, yeah. taking something for granted, okay? Yeah. Now, you're kind of right. If you die in your sins, you'll end up in hell. You've got God's promise. Right. All liars are their part in the lake of fire. And it should greatly concern you if that's even a possibility. Right. What can you do to be made right with God? So at the moment, you've told me all you have to do is talk to him. That's like saying, Judge, rape the three women, cut their throats. I want to talk to you for a long time. That'll make things right. That's not going to work. So how can talking to God help you? There's something else you need. Do you know what it is? I don't. Do you know what I'm doing with you? I'm putting you up the River Niagara without a paddle. Do you know what that means? Uh, yes. Yeah, I'm showing you you've got no hope and there's only one thing you can do. And that's put your faith in Jesus as Savior and Lord. So both told me that you're liars, blasphemers, and adulterers at heart. So if you face God on Judgment Day, and if he judges you by the Ten Commandments, do you think you'd be innocent or guilty? Well, hold on. If he was to judge most, I would say 90% of the people on this planet by the Ten Commandments, they'd all be going to a fiery brimstone. That's exactly what the Bible says. It says, straight is the gate and narrow is the way that leads to life, and few there be that find it. are born with sin. That's right. And what about you? What, so then there's my question. If Jesus Christ, the Son of God, died for our sins to wipe us clean and save our souls, then can't we walk around doing whatever we want? Because technically, he's already paid the punishment. That's true. But what you must do is repent and trust in him. Right. On the cross, Jesus said a very strange thing. Just before he died, he cried out, it is finished. Why do you think he said that? died for our sins. He was saying the debt has been paid. I took the wrath of God, the justice of God fell on me so I wouldn't have to fall on humanity. Right. And then he rose from the dead and defeated death. That means God can legally dismiss your case. Right. He can extend mercy towards you and still be just. Yes. He can commute your death sentence and let you live forever. Now here's the important thing. A parachute won't do you any good just because you believe it will save you. You've got to put your trust into that parachute. Right. And Jesus Christ will do you no good if you just believe he died for your sins and rose again on the third day. You've got to repent and trust in him like you trust a parachute. The minute you do that, Brendan, you'll be born again. God will forgive your sins, grant you the gift of everlasting life, and he'll make you a new person on the inside that loves to do that which is right because you said you lust after women all the time. You commit adultery in your heart all the time in God's eyes. Right. And so you have to turn from that sin. And the second you trust in Jesus, God will remit them. He'll remove them as far as the east is from the west. That's what the Bible says. Do you know that's an infinite distance? Did you realize that, east from west? Well, you can find north at the North Pole. You can find south at the South Pole. But you'll never find east or west. They're infinite distances. Right, right. 
And God says he'll remove your sins as far as the east is from the west because he's rich in mercy. You'll be born again the moment you trust in Christ. Now, have you ever used God's name in vain? Yes. Okay, that's by, by the Christian by the Christian standard. Yes, I have. It's a Judeo standard. Again, I don't believe in taking God's name in vain because, like I said, I don't I don't adhere to there being even being a God. And so, if somebody says that doesn't offend me personally, while it might offend you because of what you believe, it doesn't offend me. Okay. Okay, but you've got to realize this: ignorance of the law is no excuse. You that can is violate true. a law. That is true. And you can say to the judge, that doesn't concern me. I don't believe in it. It's yeah. the same with God's law. It's unlawful to give away other people's money. But I didn't know it wasn't mine. Ignorance of the law is no excuse. Fourth question. Yes, sir. Jesus said if you look at a woman and lust for her, you commit adultery with her in your heart. That's absurd. Have you ever looked at a woman with lust? Absolutely. You've admitted to me you're a liar. No, you're mischaracterizing me. Don't do that. Don't say that I'm a liar because I've lied. That is disgusting. It's despicable. Don't do that. I haven't finished the sentence. It's honestly atrocious that you would do that. Let me finish it. Okay? I'm not judging you. Try and use self-control and hear me Have now. you done drugs? You're a drug addict. It's just, it's ridiculous. No, it's not. You rape one woman, you're a rapist. Murder one person, you're a murderer. Tell one lie, you're a liar. Steal one thing, you're a thief. I'm not judging you. But by your own admission, you're a lying, thieving, blasphemous, adulterate heart. You're going to face God on Judgment Day whether you believe it or not. If God judges you by the Ten Commandments, we'll look to four of them, on Judgment Day you're going to be innocent or guilty. Innocent. Why? Because I believe that I've done the things that are right by my fellow humans, and if there's any God who feels otherwise, then that God doesn't exist because that's not a just God. You want a just God? Yes, I want a just God. Someone who punishes murderers? Somebody who, who, who commands a group of Jews to commit genocide against Syrians? Okay, let me ask you a question. That's not justice. I want to ask you a question. I'd like you to think before you answer. Okay. Did that happen? Yes. So God exists and he commanded the Jews no. to commit? No. So it didn't happen? It did happen. So your argument is fallacious. No. We can go back to the character of God. You want a just God? He's going to punish murderers, rapists, but it's he's so the thorough. God, it's the people who believe that there is a God that's the problem. Let me follow your logic, okay? You ask for a just God. Let me explain to you what a just God will do. Because the Bible reveals God as being just and holy. He is going to punish Hitler, murderers, rapists, but he's so just and thorough, he's going to punish thieves and liars and fornicators and dogmas and blasphemers. He's going to punish them wherever it's unless, what, unless they say they're sorry to Jesus? No! That's ridiculous. No! Not at That's all. That's ridiculous. No. It's insane. When, so if Hitler came up on his deathbed and said, I accept Jesus into my heart, please God forgive me, all of a sudden he's absolved of all the that he's done? That's insanity. And that's what you guys believe, and that's ridiculous. And take that person as your wife. How evil is that? An atheist can't call anything good or evil because he has no objective moral standard by which to make that judgment. The Bible does tell us that God told Joshua to kill all the Canaanites. He did kill every man, woman, and child except for Noah and his family in the Great Flood. He killed a man in the Old Testament because he didn't like what he did sexually. And in the New Testament, he killed a husband and a wife because they told one lie. Most seem to forget that he also proclaimed the death sentence upon the whole of the human race. The scriptures say, Behold the goodness and severity of God. Even though he's just and holy, he's also rich in mercy to all that call upon him, offering eternal life in the gospel. It certainly is a delusion of grandeur when a foul-mouthed, angry, blasphemous, self-righteous sinner stands in moral judgment over Almighty God. Okay! You want a just God? He is just. But the Bible says He's rich in mercy and He provided a Savior. God became a human being and suffered and died on the cross to take the punishment for the sin of the world. What you have to do is something you failed to do when you were younger. You need to repent and trust alone in Jesus. Don't accept Jesus. Don't ask Jesus into your heart. There are modern, there are modern phraseologies we use that create false converts. You need to repent of your sins and trust in Jesus like you trust a parachute. The minute you do that, you'll come out of darkness into light. You'll be forgiven all those sins, those secret sins you've committed. And God will let you live forever because he's the lover of your soul. You may think you came here of your own volition. God brought you here today so you can hear another version of what you thought you believed. So you can hear how God can forgive you. He knows you by name and knows how many hairs are on your head. He knows the thoughts of your heart and still wants to give you mercy rather than justice. 
And I don't know if you know this, but I love you, I care about you, and I don't want you to end up in hell. Please think about what we talked about. I'll think about what you said about paganism and witchcraft, but just think about your sins. Think about the Savior, what happened on that cross. Think about the fact that every day 150,000 people die, just like you and me, people that love life. 54 million every year. I'm saying God's given you a will to live. Listen to it. Well, okay, will you take will you take a book I wrote? It's a free gift from me. I will, I'll gladly take it. Thank you. So, and in, in closing, I just want to make a very, regardless of what you hear from anybody, regardless of what anybody tells you, remind, I want everyone here to remember that people say all sorts of stuff, and it's on each person individually to take that responsibility and use their brain and think for yourself. People start spouting stuff about radio waves controlling our heads. Does that mean you're going to wear a tinfoil hat? I don't know. Maybe you will, maybe you won't. But what you need to do is you need to decide for yourself what makes sense. Read, talk to people, talk to people on both sides of the aisle, and make that decision for yourself. Not because somebody's trying to scare you or tell you that if you don't, some bad things are going to happen to you, but because you've researched it, because you've been involved in the conversation, and because you've made the decision that you feel is best for you and those around you. Thank you. Let's give one round big hand. Yeah. Thank you so much. Pleasure. So ladies, thank you very much for talking to me. It's been very colorful. I've really enjoyed it. And I trust that you'll think about what we talked about today, okay? Thank you very much. Have a good day. Thank you. There are two things you have to do to be saved. You must repent and trust alone in Jesus. When are you gonna do that? I would say now, but I don't know how. Ever had an argument with someone and you go and apologize and suddenly the barrier that's between you disappears? And you have a hug and there's tears and you're reconciled. That's what it's like between you and God. The Bible says you're an enemy of God in your mind through wicked works. His wrath abides upon you. But if you come to him in repentance and what's called contrition. Do you know what contrition is? No. Ever driven on the freeway and someone's cut you off and you're really mad at them? That ever happen? <laughs> yes. And then the person turns around to you and says, sorry. You go, oh, that's okay. I do it all the time. Let's be friends. His contrition or sorrow for what he's done dissipates or gets rid of your anger in an instant. God is angry at your sins, but if you're truly sorry, it dissipates his anger in a second and he can extend mercy toward you because of what Jesus did. So repentance is actually an apology where you show the sincerity of your, your sorrow by saying, I'm not going to lie, steal, lust, fornicate, blaspheme any longer. I'm going to turn from all sin and if I do sin accidentally, I'll just ask for your forgiveness and he'll forgive. But that won't save you. The thing will save you is trusting in Jesus. He's like a parachute. The Bible says, put on the Lord Jesus Christ. If you put a parachute on, don't try and save yourself. The parachute will do all the saving. You don't w wave your arms. You just trust the parachute. And that's what you must do to be saved. Trust alone in Jesus. Repentance and faith. Now what normally happens in this case is that someone will lead another person in what's called a sinner's prayer. I don't like doing that. I'd rather just pray for you and trust that God will do a great work in your heart. Is that okay if I pray for you? Yes. Are you sorry for your sin? Yes. Are you willing to trust Jesus as your Savior and Lord? Yes. Let's pray. Father, I, I pray for Marquis that today he'll think of his sins, all of them, and find a place of genuine sorrow, and then think of what Jesus did on the cross and suffering for the sin of the world and defeating death for him. I pray today he'll repent and truly trust in you and pass from death to life because of your kindness. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. The Evidence Bible is a reservoir overflowing with everything evangelistic. I couldn't recommend it more highly. Franklin Graham said, in a day when Christians are too often silenced by the questions of skeptics, the Evidence Bible will help you be prepared to give an answer. Also commended by Christian leaders such as Josh McDowell, D. James Kennedy, Tim LaHaye, Norman Geisler, and Ken Ham. The Evidence Bible, available at livingwaters.com.